While we're on the subject of props and movies, let's look at a phenomenon that intrigues me, and that's museums presenting exhibits that take props out of popular movies and display them for audiences to pay to see, to relish again out of the context of the movie itself. So instead of history being something that's exemplified or displayed at the Smithsonian or the County Museum, we have now exhibits that take the props out of movies and display them as if they were old ancient artifacts, urns, or Egyptian amulets. Only now, it's a movie that's only been made five years ago and people are paying to see it. We know people walk down the streets and they see outfits that are copying movies. And so these outfits are trying to sell clothing, but they're using props in order to make the commerce go. But the fact is, with every popular TV series or movie, they will save those props and monetize after the movie's made because people want to see these relics as if they were some kind of talismanic, magical thing that made them suspend their disbelief while they entered that magical world of film. Here we have Star Trek, um, whose props are very rudimentary when you think of it. Uh, of course, the series was started in the 60s and everything, but now they're displayed as if they're um, some... Uh, Rosetta Stone from the past that people line up to see. And of course, these props. These props are signifying an obvious TV series, an obvious movie. And it's interesting, though. We can, we can take the visual sense of movies and reduce them to the signature props, and people will know immediately what, what we're watching or what, it's, what the movie's about. So that shows you the importance of the props. And possibly why they're being displayed in museums. Uh, now we're, we're intrigued by the prop maker's inventiveness coming up with guns like the Men in Black. Or we're in, intrigued by anything, Sucker Punch, whatever. We're intrigued by the swords, weapons, anything that was used there because they weren't real. They were uh, created as if they were sculptured. The Last Airbender, look at the masks, the swords, all these things you would think they had under some samurai graveyard, but no, this is a movie that was done and people were paid to make these uh, the models and now they're on uh, display like the Pirates of the Caribbean. You can imagine the amount of people who want to see all the implements that Johnny Depp touched. So there's a certain sense of of um, the halo effect of, of the star touching something. And it was, you know... Um, uh, this lock of hair came from somebody who's famous. And so the, the, the sense of fairy dust conferred by the star is seen in these exhibits, too. Um, and here we have Anna Karenina's exhibit. Very well done, I have to admit. Although it, it seems a little strange that people revere these objects that are just created fictional objects, not real objects that used by previous generations. Historically, it's still, it is... Uh, uh, a testament and a tribute to the artistry that goes into making props, uh, whether it's from Transformers, which we looked at earlier, or the Da Vinci Code, which this could have been uh, said to have been unearthed with relics from Troy or some anthropological expedition, but no, this is uh, created by prop masters, as were the props on Avatar, which seem kind of similar to the ones on Transformers, but these are, of course, action movies that uh, borrow from each other. And, of course, Harry Potter is going to be a huge treasure trove for props because all the significant magical items that the uh, movie series and books have made prominent, whether it's the, the, this is the golden football here or, or, or the goblet, um, it's uh, the wizard cup, as it says here. These things um, are now significant in, in, their, in, their, in their basic symbolic value. So, yes... You can have knockoffs that can be monetized, but you can also see them in exhibit. Uh, more Transformer uh, items that look like a combination of Jojo Keefe skulls made out of steel, and, and, and it could be a hood armor for all we know, but still, it's on display. Uh, James Bond. Uh, we know with James Bond movies that uh, 
Q created all these implements for James Bond to use when he uh, tries to outwit the enemy. And so here is a James Bond exhibit. It looks like it looks like a gallery exhibit that would be showing a uh, sculpture from the 15th century or something. It's, it's wonderful. I, I think it's, it's just, you see this and you say, well, I've gone to exhibits and I've seen um, ancient um, baskets that are preserved or our bone amulet uh, uh, charms or, or mortar and pestles from the Neanderthals. But this, this is a movie that was made 20 years ago. James Bond has a big significant following because uh, the items he used in the movies, especially Sean Connery, uh, the martinis of the guns, were so almost camp in the sense of uh, uh, over-exaggeration as their value in outwitting the enemy. And so James Bond exhibits are, are not only showing his props, but this, the, the items that were current at the time and now props now. So like that Life magazine which shows uh, a feature of, from Goldfinger, was current at the time, but now is, is a prop that we could use to designate a period piece. And James Bond attaché cases, they had so many movies, so many different attaché cases, and within, e within each attaché case has so many different uh, symbolic items. It's, it's like a James Cornell box that's in the Whitney or Museum of Modern Art, only it's the James Bond box. Each attaché case has a different movie that you can read out of it by looking at the, the knives, the guns, the watches, etc. And so the, the more recent James Bond movies have the uh, fancier attaché cases and um, the more, uh, you know, early, the earlier James Bond movies, of course, have something that looks almost historically ancient in the sense that what a leather attaché case. Um, and just these small items like how he breathed underwater in Thunderball, of course, looked like a cigar tube that they modified, but now it's an item under a glass case that could be compared to a necklace from Babylonia. The weapons in James Bond are just uh, wonderful because they're so obviously made up, but, uh, um, they, you know, they kind of... They, entire exhibits around here. Um, this is the man with the golden gun, of course, would be very popular here. It's, it looks like um, something you might see at the Vatican, the way it's set up. But people buy these props, rich people, and then they can go to parties and they can be um, admired not only for their wealth, but for their, their corniness, showing that they're just regular people walking around with James Bond's prop gun. Um, and, of course, everybody enjoys you know, being six steps of separation from Sean Connery and some feature here. And the fetishistic, you know, the, the fetish aspect of, 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 of prop making. I mean, you make a prop, it becomes, it's part of a popular movie, somebody becomes a fetish, uh, which means that we have uh, overdue attention paid to it, almost worship. But here, the shorts that Megan Fox has on this uh, movie here, it was actually auctioned off for a considerable sum. Like these whitey tidies here, in a museum case, who else would they be but Walter White's underwear from Breaking Bad uh, as he's making his meth, he had to strip down. So now we have Breaking Bad as a movie exhibit and it's not here in New Mexico, however, which is, I guess, my main point here is why isn't this in New Mexico? It would be a great tourist draw. They could have the hazmat suit here, his regular um, jacket and slacks for teaching, all the paraphernalia that he used in the chemi chemistry lab, the books that shows he was a teacher, the, the toy that figures in prominently. I won't be a spoiler as far as the, pro as the plot goes, but all the beakers and everything used, the, the different substances that, of course, were props that made the fake meth, uh, the pill bottles, the, the inhalers, uh, the cell phones, the fake beards, all a museum exhibit, but not in New Mexico. We should have a film museum with all the props and paraphernalia that have been used in movies and TV series 
here since the turn of the century, I think. Um, it's just, it's obviously something that uh, needs to be done because when people think of New Mexico now, they do, do think of Breaking Bad. So this is, this, this belongs here in our state, not somewhere else. That hat, that jacket, says New Mexico all over it, we should own that museum and not some other place because if you look at what they put in their museum, this is somewhere in New Jersey, New York, they put their museum, they have a video monitor, and what's it show? It shows those actors in New Mexico. So I'm making my appeal to anybody in this class, we need to bring it back home and claim it for our own.